So these past couple of days have been interesting. I have been hanging out on a cruise ship traveling from Chongqing to the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River. For the past couple of days, I've been visiting Fengdu Ghost City. I've been to the White Emperor Palace. Uh, I've been to the Three Gorges and looking at them from, from the river. Tomorrow is one of the big events because tomorrow we're actually going to the dam itself, going through that ship elevator they have. The cruise actually stops there and we'll be getting off in Yichang and then heading back to Chongqing tomorrow. But let me tell you a little bit about what I've been doing for the past couple of days. So the weather isn't that great. Uh, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I was hoping the weather was going to be a little bit better. But this is the first stop of our little trip. Breakfast, Fengdu, uh, a little bit further down to Zhongshan, and then uh, uh, we're going to meet uh, maybe the captain of the ship today. Uh, maybe get into the, the control room, the captain's hut, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Being a, a lazy Western tourist, I had to take the cable car, cable car up to the top because it's raining. We don't want to deal with it. Uh, but there are still steps. Uh, I was not cut out for this. Need to hit the gym when I get home. One of the first of the bigger attractions inside the Fengdu Ghost City is this bridge behind me. There are a lot of people here, but you can just see it behind me. It's a very, very, very old bridge, one of the national relics in the area. And the reason why this bridge is so famous is because if you can walk across it smoothly, uh, it's supposed to symbolize that you're a good person like a wonderful person even. Um, but if you can't cross it smoothly, especially on a day like this where it's a little bit rainy, it means you're maybe still a good person, but you may have to pray a little bit on it to, to maybe become better. So it's a big tourist attraction that a lot of people want to cross this bridge and want to try and do it uh, easily. And that's why everyone is lining up to, to have a go at it. So we've made it to what looks like the top of one of the mountains, one of the bigger pagodas here behind me. And I think we are coming towards the end of the guided trip to the Fengdu Ghost City. There's been a lot of people, there's a lot of commotion, a lot of people moving around, but overall, it looks like a very interesting place and definitely a place that I would want to come back to later on. My only regret is that I don't have enough time to walk around and really dig into the details and figure out what's going on. But, uh, Sometimes you just need to have a reason to come back to, to visit the place again. So I think we're just about to head back down, back to the ship and uh, get some lunch. Gonna see if we can find our way down. We've lost our tour guide. So, uh, yeah, let's see if we can find our way down.
After leaving Chongqing on Thursday evening, the first stop of the cruise was on Friday morning at the Fengdu Ghost City. Now, this was the first tour off the boat, going into the Fengdu Ghost City and experiencing what the city had to offer. We uh, were taken around by local tourist guides who were very knowledgeable and sort of shared all the stories and all the, the histories about the buildings and what you could see. And the Ghost City is a really interesting place. I've never been there before myself. I'm not really... Uh, a person who believe in, believes in ghosts or, or in spirits, but it was actually very interesting to see all these buildings and these monasteries and knowing what the local people there uh, believe. So that was a really cool trip. I wish we'd had a little bit longer, but there is a good reason why we couldn't stay for as long as I wanted to, because there are many other activities um, that, you can, that you can participate in during these cruises. So you just have to make the best of what you have, and uh, I tried to do just that. So I got some photos, I got some videos, and uh, it was a really cool trip. After coming back from Fengdu Ghost City, we had lunch on the ship, um, and then I had a chance to explore the ship a little bit more on my own, and also I had a chance to speak with a guy named Vincent, who is a, a guide working on the ship, um, and he was able to tell me more about the company, the ship, uh, how many people you can have on the boat, and, and lots of details like that. And a little bit more about his own personal experience working on cruise ships like these. He was also kind to take me to the bridge where the ship is being controlled from by the captain and some of the first officers. Uh, really cool because I got to go in there by myself and I got to to uh, honk the horn, uh, I guess you can say, on a ship, right? Do you honk horns on a ship? What Do you honk horns? All right, whatever. I made noise. Wow. This is just one big open deck. It is the bridge. Wow. I'm trying to resist the urge to touch every single thing I see. Yeah, that's the look of the wheel. It's not as you imagine, it's big, it's tiny. <laughs> but it can control for 10,000 times of the ship. Yeah. That to this one in the hand. Power engine right here. Maximum. Now it's not a maximum power. Maximum power would be like 26 kilometers per hour. Right. Now so what are we doing now? Now. 10ish? Let me say uh, 16. 16? 16? 16, yeah, 16 point eight. Reasonable speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, there are. Center of the circle is where we are. Right. This is our shores. This is boat ahead of us. Each circle, uh, 500 meters. 500 meters. Yeah. The speed of the ship, the kilometers per hour, the depths, 44, 45 meters right. deep. Right here. How far down does the ship actually go? Uh, that's three meters. Three meters? Three meters. Wow, that's not much. Yeah. Uh, definitely the best seats in the house. You can see everything from up here. It must look really good in like the early morning and like when the sun goes down. That's right, yeah. That must be like Yeah, yeah. I, I when I got spectacular. some photos, some shots when sun shine and sunrise and yeah. the sunset. Well oh, it's a beautiful place here. Yeah, I can I imagine. Talk some. Yeah, there's horn, horn, press like a horn on. Yeah. You wanna try? I can fire the horn? Uh are you sure? Ah, yeah, Am I not yeah. going to scare people by doing that? Uh, no, no, no. That's a <laughs> Which one? This one. Huh? Just press it. Yeah, it's a short, but I'm not too long. Huh? That one's better. That one's better? Yeah. Let's see if we can hear it on here. Ah. Yeah, that was loud. <laughs> So first of all, thank you for taking the time to, to sit. I'm sure you're busy and you have a lot of stuff to do with all the guests uh, and stuff to take care of. Um, I was wondering, you've been kind enough to, to, to talk to me yesterday about uh, yeah. the trips and stuff, but could you give me like an introduction to the ship and like the company, the Yangtze Gold Cruise Company? Oh, 
Yeah, first uh, Yangtze Gold Cruise is a state-owned enterprise. Mm -hmm. It is the uh, largest cruise line on the Yangtze River. Uh, so far, we have uh, seven cruise ships, and we are planning to make uh, the new one. Uh, we just uh, fly it maybe next year, and yeah. then in another two years' time, we'll bring the new ship to come to the Yangtze River. Wow. Uh, the Yangtze Gold cruise ship, uh, Yangtze Gold 2, uh, this uh, was built in the year 2012. Uh, when this uh, ship was built, I was the very first uh, staff kind oh, of really? crew. Yeah, I was, <laughs> was on a maiden voyage yeah. on the ship. And, uh, so this is, uh, when this ship was built, this is the biggest cruise ship on the Yangtze River. Yeah. And probably the biggest uh, cruise ship of the inland rivers of yeah. the world, because the river is too big and it's too deep. And the ship is uh, 150 meters long. 24 meters wide right. and more than 17,000 tons. Total that's, that's capacity heavy. is 570 passengers. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a lot. We actually saw, uh, just earlier, we saw the Yangtze Gold 7 pass by on, on that, one side. That's right. They, because the Yangtze River cruise are almost like uh, this every week, one week or round a trip. Yeah. So we have a seven cruiser ship now and we have uh, every day we have one ship. It starts from uh, Chongqing yeah. and it starts yeah. from uh, Yichang. And uh, so this morning, well, it's just uh, it's afternoon. Yeah. Just after just lunch. Just came back from lunch. I, I yeah. came back from lunch. We saw the Yans go to seven. That's right. Let's go back to Chongqing. Yeah. So, so you and I spoke a little bit last night about the program. And I know that last night uh, on the first day, people just sort of come on the boat. They get settled in. There is a welcome party in the bar. And then this morning, we went to Fengdu. But what is the plan for? For like the rest of the trip? Uh, first, uh, we have uh, beautiful things to say, like tomorrow. And uh, always in the evening, we have the big show. I think you are oh, going yeah. to say you're going to record it. Yes. Oh, that is uh, the, only the three quarters dam is uh, built. And we are uh, going to make uh, this three quarters uh, golden loot for travelers, not only to see the mountains and the gorgeous the rivers, mm. but we have some other. Uh, entertainment shows. It was quite a professional open air, yeah. uh, quite fantastic. Um, but if you wanted to know more about the Chinese history, about the Three Kingdoms period, <laughs> that would be more interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, tomorrow will be the, another historic site, the White Emperor City. Well, that is a view is uh, featured at the back of 10 yeah. Chinese money, the picture. Yes. That's tomorrow morning one. And tomorrow uh, afternoon, uh, our ship will pass through the three gorges right. uh, to see the mountains, cliff sides on either side of the river, and we we'll change it even to a smaller uh, boat for the mini three, uh, lesser three gorges yeah. called Xiao Sanxia. And also we have the mini three gorges, the Xiao Xiao Sanxia, as I said, uh, tongue twisters. <laughs> tongue twisters, <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous for you. Xiao gorgeous, Sanxia, gorgeous. Xiao Sanxia. Oh, that is amazing, beautiful, picturesque view. It's also um, because even, I mean, the, the cruises started in Chongqing a long time ago, like sailing down the rivers must have been something that has existed for a while. Doing a cruise down the Yangtze River must have been famous for a long time, but why is it still so famous? And why is it that so many people are still coming to, uh, to sail on these cruises? Uh, yeah, first, uh, the cruise ships now is much better, mm. they're much better than 19, like 90s even and before the construction yeah. of the dam. Uh, we have a longer, wider, and even more uh, stable. And you, you cannot feel the ship is moving. I was and just about to say that when you said stable, like the ship is very, very, very smooth. Like yeah, every now and right. then you'll, you'll feel like the ship is turning or something, but you don't feel like waves or anything. Of course, sailing on a river should also be smoother than sailing That's, on the ocean. But. Yeah, yeah, this river ship is quiet. Yeah. And this, this is one thing. Another thing, and uh, three gorges, there's, the scenery is still there. Yeah. You know, some people believed, oh, the dam is built, the three gorges, the view is submerged. And, yeah, and you cannot see the three gorges, yeah. but actually the three gorges are there. And uh, the dam is another, you know, attracting yeah. place as a destination. It's still, the, isn't it still and, like the biggest man-made it is still engineering project. Yeah, hydropower dam like project. Ridiculously big. Like if, if one thing that I've learned about China is that in China everything is just bigger and better. Like the things there were so big. Yeah. And they're also just built really fast because even even considering the scale of the dam, like the the time it took to build it, yeah. in in Western countries we're like, wow.
was by far one of the busiest trips, but not even the, the most exhausting. Saturday morning, we got up early and went to the White Emperor City, which is a small island located uh, near one of the big gorges that, that the cruise ship actually sails through. An interesting thing about the place is that before the Three Gorges Dam was built, this island was much, much higher up and you had to climb something like 1400 steps to get up to the top. But after the dam was built, um, the sea level has raised significantly and now you only have to walk up about 360 or 320 or so steps. The White Emperor City was cool, it was small, and we had a lot of time to really look around and, and get a lot of video clips. That was really cool, a really nice place to see. And I know that many of the, the other foreign tourists who were on the boat and took part in that uh, optional trip really enjoyed it as well. I don't know how these guys do it. It's hard enough for me to walk up here, but these guys are just carrying other people going up these steps. I'm gonna go home. One more. It's a long way up. It's one thing carrying yourself. These guys are superhuman. Oh, this rock is cold. So we made it up to, to the top, this little island uh, where the White Emperor City is. It's actually much smaller than I anticipated, but still fairly nice. All the tour groups are moving really, really slowly around, uh, which is just a sign that there's so much history and so many things to be told about this place, which is great, because I'm all about that stuff. And it's funny because yesterday I was complaining that we didn't have enough time in Fengdu to really take in everything. Uh, but here, it is almost like we're here for too long. We have two hours at this place and splitting off from the group. I think I toured the whole thing in maybe 20 minutes or so. It's a little cool up here on the, on the little island. Funny thing is, before they built the dam, many of the buildings that were on the lower part of the island uh, were still there. And you would have to climb 1400 steps to get up to the top where we are now. After the Three Gorges Dam was built, uh, the sea level rose significantly and now many of the buildings that were located at the lower end of the island are now gone and only the top part here remains and now you only have to climb 360 steps. Thankfully you can buy your way up the stairs by paying for those guys who carry you up. It just looks insane. I don't know how they can do that. But on top of that, because I know I'm a little bit on the heavy side, I would feel so bad about getting those wagons to carry me all the way up. Coming back from the White Emperor City, we then went on to do a separate boat cruise, so a, a trip on a smaller boat, taking us into the Lesser Three Gorges, and from there, an even smaller boat taking us into what is called the Mini Three Gorges. It's hard to explain what this place is like. You really just have to come and see it with your own eyes. And while going on a cruise in Chongqing might not be something uh, that most younger people tend to think about doing, um, really, if you're into to scenery, if you want to see spectacular sceneries, mountains, green, sort of emerald-colored water, uh, this is an absolute must. Fengdu Go City was really nice, the White Emperor City was nice, but there is no doubt that going into the Lesser Three Gorges, sailing through the gorges on the way here, and even the Mini Three Gorges is an absolute must. I was completely blown away by how beautiful that place is. You know, find your coffin. You know that uh, when people die, uh, they still put a wooden coffin. Uh, inside the cave, usually inside the cave, but on the ledge of the cave, we could see that because now this river much, much higher. Uh, the coffin there in Wuxia, uh, more than 2,000 years. That's amazing right here, the second gorge. Uh, third gorge, uh, we call it Emerald, Emerald. So last gorge, uh, we call it Mini, Mini Gorge, right? Yeah. Uh, Finally on one of the more important parts of the Yangtze River cruise is that we're going into now what is called the Lesser Three Gorges a smaller tributary river that flows into the Yangtze River and then continues on from there. Uh, and then on that trip, we're also gonna go into a, a smaller boat that's gonna take us to the Mini Three Gorges. So we're actually off the cruise ship at the moment on a smaller tour boat, uh, because the water here is, is uh, narrow, the, the passage is narrow. Slowly coming up on the third and last of the lesser three gorges. We made it through the 
past two already, and I have to admit they're quite a sight. Even with the weather is is as it is today, which is a little dark, cloudy, and rainy. Uh, I'm actually very much surprised at what I've seen so far. So I'm looking forward to seeing the last one. The last one's called the Emerald, uh, the Emerald Gorge. We've actually been uh, racing against some of the other boats and overtook one a little while back, which was cool. So slow. So we're coming to the end of the Lesser Three Gorges here. I have to say, this uh, landscape is something very, very, very special. Not something that I've ever seen before. It just goes to, to show how much beauty there is in this place, in this country. In a minute, we're gonna go on the smaller boat to go on the Mini Three Gorges cruise. And uh, they say that's gonna be even more beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that. That's it for the, more or less, the Mini Three Gorges cruise. We're just sailing to this location and coming back. So we just looked at one of those caves, one of the only caves on this little stretch that actually has one of those hanging coffins in it. So now the boat's turning around. We're going back to the boat we were on before. It's been a busy day. Went to the, to the White Emperor Palace this morning, came back for lunch and then came straight here. So it's been a, a busy day. <laughs> So we're just coming up at the Three Gorges Dam elevator. Right now what we're doing is the ship is actually touring towards the dam itself, which is this big construction over here. You can see all these tourists all lining up to try and get a good photo. It's a little crazy. So this is the last part of the trip that we're on. Uh, once we go down the elevator, they're gonna take us to see the actual dam from, uh, from the lower side. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna head back. So, uh, this little trip through the dam is also marking the end of this little three-day cruise, which has been quite an experience. Um, it's been interesting to try something that I've never tried before uh, and to do something that is so famous in a city that I've lived in for so long without having actually done it myself. It's cold out here. <laughs> definitely sense a sense of awe and pride perhaps even in the people who are visiting. You can tell they're all very eager to come and see every little bit and detail of what it is that's going on. I had my doubts about what I would feel about being here but it's actually as someone who's been watching all these big mega project shows uh, on like National Geographic and stuff as I grew up. It's really cool to be inside one of these things for real. Two stops of our little Three Gorges Dam tour. I think we're heading up to a lookout post. Dun, dun. 
So this has to be the older of the two lift systems. So the one we took, the ships are coming down in a vertical line. It only takes about 11 minutes. This one is the older system where the ships has to come in one section at a time and get lowered. And then as they follow the system, they come all the way out. There are one, two, three, four, four or five steps in total. This process takes upwards of like three to four hours. to sort of crawl down to the other side. 